UFOs. That is what we are talking about today, my friends. And I'm not talking about spacecrafts or little green men or aliens or anything like that. We are talking about unfinished projects, which if you think about it, can seem like you are in a bit of a twilight zone. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have a few unfinished projects. I have some from this year and some from last year. So I'm going to go ahead and delve into that pile. And hopefully with your help, I can figure out what I should do with these unfinished projects, if I should finish them, if I should, you know, toss them out, if I should donate them after completing them. So make sure that you comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on these projects. Some of them are three quarters of the way finished. Some of them are halfway finished. Some of them I haven't even started yet, but I cut out the fabric. So again, um, if you can chime in below and let me know your thoughts, that would be very helpful. I had a goal and my goal was to finish these unfinished projects um, halfway into the year. We're in November and the year is almost over and I have not touched my unfinished projects. So yeah, I, I have quite a few. I think I have about six and I'm hoping to get maybe three done in November and three done in in um, December so I can you know have that goal completed for the year. So if you can chime in below, like I said, please help me out and let me know your thoughts. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into the video and see some of these unfinished projects that I have. I want to go ahead and start with the McCall's M8044. This is a skirt that came out, I believe it was the year before last, and I had intended on making it during the maxi dress challenge a couple years ago, but I didn't. And so I finally made it this summer. And the first variation that I made was, I think it was view C. I'll put the image here on the screen so you can see what the pattern looks like and then also the different variations. So I did the variation with the flounce on the bottom. And this is a, a fabric that was sponsored to me by Zulu Fabrics. And fortunately, you know, the only requirements that I had to do for this particular for this particular fabric is uh, to uh, show my progress and show the fabric on my IG or Instagram. And so I did that. So I was really glad that, um, you know, even though this project didn't turn out the way that I had hoped that um, I was able to at least share the fabric with you all. Really, the only thing that I need to do is cut open the buttonholes here. So it has like buttonholes going down this uh, skirt and it's an asymmetrical skirt that has buttons that go on the left side of the body. And uh, you do have to stabilize the inside of, of your skirt here. The bottom here, like I said, has a ruffle on the bottom. And as you can see, I still need to do some top stitching here to make sure that the, um, the little edge here stays in place. So I have to top stitch that, but everything is pretty much complete. I just need to um, open up the button holes and put the buttons on the garment. Well, while I was creating my button holes, this here, um, the edge on the garment here shifted. Uh, quite a bit and and by the way this is a charmeuse uh, type fabric and so it shifted and it just does not look very well when I wrap it around my body and you can kind of see the uneven edge now because it shifted and so I got a little bit disappointed with the project and I was really frustrated and so I decided to just sit it to the side and as it sat to the side, you know, for a week and then two weeks and then three weeks. And every time I would go back and revisit the project, I would get a little bit discouraged by the fact that I made that mistake. So that's one of the unfinished projects that I need to do. It's very simple. All I have to do, like I said, is open up the buttonholes and put the buttons on. But I do think that I'm going to donate this particular skirt just because... I'm not comfortable with having this uneven um, edge here. I really like the fabric. I love the drape of it. It's a really beautiful fabric. And like I said, if I did not make that mistake on the edge there, I think that it would be a lovely skirt for me. And then also I think I need about a half an 
a half an inch in the waist more for comfort and ease. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I want to donate it as well. So anyway, that's the first project. Okay, so moving on to the second project, which is the Berta 6221. This is actually a dress pattern, but I hacked it and I um, hacked it into a, a shirt. And so I'll put the different variations of the shirts that I made here. I made a fall shirt. I made a really cool summer shirt. So it's um, a really nice pattern. But this uh, fabric here, I had left over when I was doing the pixie dress. And uh, I had used this and I had wanted to make the pixie dress out of this. But that's another, <laughs> that's another um, UFO that I didn't finish either. But this remnant piece here was left over from the pixie dress and I thought, hey, I would be able to get um, another top out of the Berta 6221 pattern. And that's basically what I did. However, I did not finish it. So this is a really lovely piece. Um, as you can see, as it was sitting in my UFS, UFO box, it kind of is like in need of pressing, but it's a really nice fluid fabric here. This is a rayon fabric and it has these really beautiful purple and blue and white uh, flowers, a little bit of a light pink there as well. So it's a really cool uh, print and I really like it that it's a small print because it makes the top half of my body um, look more symmetrical with the bottom half of my body. And so I really like this print and it's really cool to wear. It's a really lightweight fabric, so it's really perfect for summer. Um, but anyway, I digress. I need to hem the sleeve on this. That's the only thing. I just need to search this edge and hem the sleeve. I don't know why I stopped at that point. Oh yes, I do remember now. I wanted to use bias binding to finish off the edge instead of surging the edge like I did the last time and flipping it inward. I want to actually put bias binding on this. And so I was looking for um, a nice bias binding that would go with this fabric here. And so once I can find the bias binding for that, then I can get that out of my stash. And I'm definitely going to keep this one. Next is the McCall's M8067, which is a button up shirt pattern and I really like this pattern. I did the short sleeve version of this pattern and I made it a couple times. If I can find pictures, I'll make sure that I put it in here so you can see. This was, I believe, my second or my third, my third attempt at this pattern. And I feel like this isn't the best fabric for it. This was a fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics several years ago. It was in their uh, cotton Supima uh, premium cotton fabric collection and it's a beautiful fabric it's very it has this slight sheen on it it's almost like a, a sateen type fabric and it's a really gorgeous color but I don't think that this was the best choice for this particular fat uh, this particular pattern I made this two years ago and so my biceps uh, grew in width at that by that time and so definitely cannot fit the bicep. So I was in the process of seam ripping the armhole to redo the sleeve. And I went to Joanne's um, at the time, this was about two years ago, and I could not find this fabric anymore. And so what I did is, um, I stopped and I put it inside of my inside of my UFO box and I thought I'll think of something later and if I can't think of anything I'll just go ahead and sew it and donate it and so that's basically what I need to do with this piece I need to finish it complete it and then I'm going to donate it because I can't wear it anymore and I can't switch out the sleeves or anything because they don't have this fabric anymore next is a more recent pattern that I was sewing and this is the cashmere concord tee now this is a very very lightweight jersey uh, slub fabric and it's as you can see here you have the little lines going through it it's such a thin fabric that it's impossible to do anything with and if you 
make a mistake, you might as well forget it because seam ripping is just like impossible on this type of fabric. Um, as you can see, it's very, very sheer and uh, it's not good for that. Now I have all the pieces. I didn't do like the neck band and um, I have that piece. And then I think there's a band for the sleeve as well. I still have that piece as well. So I didn't lose any pieces, uh, but I don't like the fact that the fabric is so sheer. And so as I was sewing with it, I just thought, uh, I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to wear this because it's just so sheer. But anyway, I stopped midway through the project and I was able to put on the sleeve. As you can see here, this is the sleeve right here. So I put the sleeves on and I'm at the point where the front and the back needs to be sewn together. And uh, since this is one of those uh, flat where you're putting your sleeve in using the flat method, I would just make one long stitching line going down the side here, creating a side seam and through the arm as well. So I just need to do that and put on the neck band and the sleeve band and hem the bottom of the shirt. Uh, like I said, I stopped in the middle of this because I thought this is just way too sheer and I don't know if I'm going to wear it. And so I still need to complete it, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. It's a really beautiful shade of purple and I really like it. And initially I thought that I would make this to go with this here. And I thought that those two would be good as a set. And uh, yeah, and to my surprise, I didn't know that I would have two unfinished garments that was supposed to be a set. So yeah, that's basically what happened with, with this piece here. So I'm definitely going to finish it. I just don't know if I'm going to keep it. Moving on to the McCall's 8219. I would have to say this is definitely one of my sewing fails for the year. And when I do my sewing fail video, you'll probably see this again. I did not like this pattern as much as I thought that I would. There's a lot of gaping. I feel like this pattern is not for uh, women who are uh, CD cups and up. Um, I felt like because the pattern goes up to, I believe it goes up to an extra L or uh, I think it's either an extra large or 2XL. I can't remember. I thought, oh, for sure, you know, women with bigger bus can wear this and still have coverage. That was not the case for me. Um, I tried to put an inset here and I'm not like really big busted. I um, am like a 36D. So I'm on the lower end when it comes to D cup. Um, and I still had trouble with this area here. So I tried to create an inset for it, which is, let's see here, it's this piece here. So I tried to create an inset and put the inset, oh, that goes like this, and put the inset like that to cover up the part of the cleavage area that was showing the most and it just it just didn't work um, I think it's because of the type of the fabric it's very drapey and so it didn't work and I wanted to really tailor it even more to get it to not drape and to sit there without having any issues but so that's basically <laughs> what is going on with this project here so this lower half here, you have another piece that you're sewing on to that, to the piece here at the bottom. And you sew that piece onto here. And so, yeah, there's that. And then um, I still have the sleeves as well. So I have the project and none of the, none of the pieces were lost, which is really nice but I had lost all motivation 
for this project because um, of that deep V neckline and having my breast exposed. It was just too much for me. And so I threw it in a box. I do want to finish it. But again, I think I'm going to go ahead and donate it. I think I might nix the inset idea. And if I were to keep it, I would definitely uh, put on a camisole underneath of it. And that would actually help a lot. So yeah, I'm definitely going to finish it. And after I finish it, I can kind of get an idea of whether or not I want to keep it or if I want to get rid of it. Okay, moving on to another garment that was in my stash for about two years. This is the Lottie blouse, and this is by Simple Sew. Now, originally when I downloaded this pattern, it was off of the Love Sewing Magazine site where you could get everything for free and download. Well, not everything, but they had a lot of patterns that you can get for free. The Love Magazine uh, website has since changed and so it's not how it used to be you don't really have so many options of free patterns as much but anyway if you want to get this pattern you can get it on the simple sew.com website it comes in a, a bundle so you get the top and you also get the skirt so I'll put that in the description box below just in case any of you are interested. This is a really relatively easy pattern. It goes together really well. The fabric that I chose is another Shally fabric. It's very gorgeous. This is a fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics like five years ago. And I had it in my stash for like three years. And then two years ago, I took it out and I decided I'm going to make something with this. So it's a really cute abstract design cream and black and here let me take off some of these note reminders these are reminders for me and i'll tell you about that in a minute so this top is a top that has a little bit of a, a keyhole opening in the front you have ties that you're going to put on the front neckline and around through the back neckline but the way that this design is done, it's very confusing. And especially when you don't have any instructions. And so I downloaded this, like I said, from Love Sewing Magazine and they rarely had instructions for their patterns. But this was a really uh, easy pattern. So I thought I don't need the instructions. And that was partially true. But the design of this is just, and I read some of the blog posts on this particular design and also looked at a few videos and pretty much everyone has said the same thing when it comes to this little neckline here it's a little bit uh, frustrating to work with so and I just realized you probably can't see the neckline because of the type of fabric this is but here's the neckline here it has like this little slant here so that's where you would put the tie and then down here it has like a rounded neckline and that's where the keyhole would be now this bit here let me see if I could lay it down so this part here is finished off with bias binding so they have a pattern that you would create a bias binding for and you finish that off with the bias binding and then you put your tie I I'm assuming anyway you start your tie here and then you tie it around the back you sew it around the back and then around here the issue with that is is there's no point on the tie like there are no notches to tell you where to stop and start it and so I was having difficulty trying to figure out how to figure that out because even though you have a back center seam and you could put that back center seam on the back center seam of the garment, it's really difficult because the binding that they give you is larger than the keyhole opening. And so it's, it, they don't really tell you where to stop and start, you know what I mean? With notches. So I thought even if I didn't have the instructions, I still could have had some directions if they had notches on 
the pattern, which they didn't. So anyway, I got frustrated with that after seam ripping my, after seam ripping my um, binding here, because I had placed the binding on there and then I thought, oh no, that's wrong. So I took the binding off and uh, luckily I did not rip the fabric, but I took the binding off and so anyway, I need to complete this project here. Uh, and I thought I'm just going to go ahead and create my own little way of doing this pattern instead of trying to follow their outline. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my own idea on how to put the tie on and how to put the binding on and all that other stuff. After reading several of the blog posts on this, that's basically what most people did. They just decided at one point that they were going to put the binding on however they thought would be best and also the ties. So anyway, that's the Lottie blouse by So Simple and I need to get that done because I'm thinking about uh, doing a Christmas blouse with this particular pattern as well. And so I wanna go ahead and get that done. The other thing that I had thought about doing, so I created my own facing pieces for the front and the back for this particular blouse. And I thought about putting the facings on the blouse and then also sandwiching the tie in between the blouse and the facings. And so I thought about doing that as well. And so that's why I have these facing pieces, but I just need to get some fabric because I ran out of this fabric. I just need to get some fabric that is suitable for that. So that's basically this project and what I'm doing with that project. I have one more project that I wanna share with you real quick. This is the Pixie Dress by Style Arc. If you all remember, I did this in collaboration with Natita of So Natural Dane, and we posted this um, in August. And we were really excited about doing this collab together. It was a fun collaboration. This was my the first dress, the very first dress that I had made with the Pixie Dress before doing a mock-up. And like I said before, this is a beautiful fabric. I love the fabric. I love the, the colors in the fabric. It's just such a gorgeous fabric. But the pixie dress had um, a neckline. The neckline was gaping on me. And I think it's because of my neck. And I'll give you the link to my review of this dress and I'll put that in the description box below but it gaped really badly and so what I had to do with my final version I didn't do it with this one because I figured it out and I was running out of time and I thought I need to sit this to the side and I need to work on my final version so with this version what I had to what I need to do is I need to fix that gaping and that's basically bring this in here, this neckline piece here, I need to bring in about five, eight, seven inch. I know it's hard to see, but this is the neckline and this is the, the facing that goes on the neckline here. So that's the neckline and I need to pinch out some of this excess fabric and I'm gonna pinch it out at the shoulder here. And then I, I'm going to taper it down to nothing so that it doesn't affect the sleeve here. So I had to seam rip this here. So I had to seam rip this shoulder here at the neckline and then also right around the sleeve head area so that I can actually pinch out this extra fabric and then taper it down to nothing and then stitch it. And that's basically how I took out that excess fabric at the neckline to prevent the gaping. But I didn't do that with this one. I just threw it in my UFO pile like I always do when I get, you know, tired of working with something. And I, that's really have become, a, it really has become a habit for me to do that. 
and I really need to stop doing that. But anyway, those are all my UFO projects and things I need to get done. Uh, if you have any uh, comments, please let, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And let me know if you have any UFO projects that you are sitting on, how long you've been sitting on them, and what are you doing to get rid of them? Like, what kind of mindset do you have to 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 get to to say okay i'm going to finish these us ufo projects i got to get rid of them or do you just kind of toss them and not worry about them and you don't have a ufo pile anyway i love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below all right everyone so that does it for today's video thank you so much for tuning in and for lending me your time today i really appreciate it if you haven't done so already please make sure that you like this video also, if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing if you like this content and make sure you turn on the notifications because turning on the notifications will ensure that you receive notifications of all my videos when I post them. So don't forget to turn on a notification. All right, everyone. I hope you all have a blessed and happy Wednesday. And until next time, stay creative. Bye.